Hello, this is Pastor Carl Gallops. I want you to think about something with me. Surely you have seen the viral video now about the woman uh, followed by some children and a man, I'm assuming it's her husband, with her as they go into a target. She lifts up a Bible and she walks the aisles, makes a circle around the store, comes back out and proclaims that the judgment of God is coming upon this nation and upon Target because of the transgender bathroom policy of Target and and particularly the nation's uh, gravitation towards all things homosexual, gay marriage, transgenderism, etc. Uh, I, I call it the Target Mama video. Now, I don't use that in a disparaging way. It's just as of now in the making of this particular recording. I have researched on the internet. I can't find out what her name is. I would be glad to call her by her name, uh, but uh, just giving it a cute title so that people might pay attention, I call it the Target Mama video. The link to that full video, and it's only a minute and a half, is below this video, and I advise you to take a look at it if you haven't seen it already. But here's the point. On a lot of uh, Facebook sites and YouTube sites where this video has been posted, and it, it has been seen by many millions now. As I said, it's gone viral. I've noticed that a lot of people identifying themselves as Christians have commented things like, and, and these are actual comments, but also they represent generically things like, this woman has gone mad. Uh, this is a lunatic with a Bible. Another one said, what a shame. Another one said, what a disgrace to Christianity. Another one said, what an embarrassment. I'm embarrassed to be called a Christian because of this woman. Another one said, her poor children. And another one said, she's just an uneducated fool. Now, these are some of the comments, and there are many more, some of them that I can't even say. These are just some of them posted by people who claimed to be Christians. So what we have here is a woman followed by her children. She obviously gave thought to this. She had it recorded. Uh, she doesn't say anything nasty. She doesn't curse. She doesn't make any threats. She simply goes through the store, lifting up the Bible, declaring that God's judgment is coming upon America, uh, advising target shoppers not to shop there anymore because of the possible danger, potential danger to them and their children in the bathrooms of Target, makes the circle and comes out. And she's an embarrassment. She's a disgrace. She's gone mad. She's uneducated, really? And these comments from Christians, really? I wonder if these Christians have ever really, really studied their Bibles. I wonder if they have ever done a, a real study of the heroes of their faith. You know, the prophets. I, I mean, I'm thinking immediately of Ezekiel and Isaiah and Jeremiah and Hosea. I mean, we could go on and on. The Bible's full of prophets who did what the world around them thought were lunatic things or shameful things, disgraceful things, embarrassing things, uneducated things. I mean, I think of Ezekiel, the guy that gave us Ezekiel chapter 37, which predicted the return of Israel in the last days, and we're the only generation to have seen that happen. And Ezekiel chapter 38 and 39, which predicted a coalition of nations uh, in the Middle East joining themselves together to come against Israel in the last days, to come against a returned Israel in the last days. I mean, that, that Ezekiel, who began his ministry by publicly eating a scroll, who then went to the public squares day in and day out for 430 days, lying on his side, preaching to the people, indicating the fall, the eventual fall of the nation of Israel. I'm talking about Ezekiel, who cooked his food over human waste. Actually, that's what God told him to do. He begged God to let him change it to cow dung. The same Ezekiel that refused to mourn his wife's death as an illustration of what God was getting ready to do to Israel, God's spiritual wife. You know, that Ezekiel that's held up as a hero, how shameful, how disgraceful. His poor children, right? How about Isaiah, who preached for three years in his underwear? Three years in his underwear. Some Bible experts and Expositors of the Hebrew language and the scriptures say that he actually preached in the nude. Regardless, in the nude or in the underwear, for three years, a preacher wandering the streets. But this is Isaiah, the same one that gave us Isaiah 6. Behold, a virgin shall be with child. I mean, Matthew chapter 1 opens with Isaiah's prophecy. This is the same guy that gave us Isaiah chapter 9. For unto us a child is born, unto us a Savior is given. He'll be called Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Prince of Peace. 
etc. The same Isaiah that gave us chapter 53. He was pierced for our transgressions, bruised for our iniquities. Yeah, preached in his underwear for three years. Poor children, huh? What an embarrassment to the church, huh? What a disgrace Isaiah must have been. And then there was Jeremiah. (laughs) He preached in his underwear too. But the difference was he was told to never wash his underwear. And he wore the nasty, filthy, stinking underwear as he proclaimed the judgment of God coming upon God's people because they wouldn't turn back. And then after that stint of prophecy was over, he wore a cattle yoke as he prophesied in the streets. But have you ever read Jeremiah? Have you ever read of all the predictions of the coming of the Christ, the righteous branch, the one whom God would raise up? I'm thinking of Hosea, who was ordered by God to marry a prostitute and then gave their children horrific names, indicating that their children were to be living examples of what was happening between God and his people. One of his daughters was named Unloved. One of his sons was named Not My People. And then his wife committed adultery on him. Of course, she was a prostitute. Went off with another guy. And yet Hosea was ordered to take her back as an illustration of how God was willing to take back the prostitute of Israel. And on and on and on the accounts go. Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea. So the woman who walks through Target with her Bible in her hand, proclaiming that God's judgment is coming upon the United States, she's castigated by fellow Christians? She's called crazy? She's called an idiot with the Bible? People say her poor children? Really? Apparently, there are a lot of Christians who don't know the Word of God and who hold up heroes, Ezekiel, Isaiah, Jeremiah, Hosea, etc., who did far worse than this dear lady who walked through Target. But I'm also thinking of another guy in the Scriptures. He ate with prostitutes and tax collectors. He spit on the ground and made mud and put it on a blind man's eyes. He touched and hugged and loved on people with leprosy against all religious and medical laws of his day. He shouted at and thoroughly disrespected the religious elite, calling them sons of hell, hypocrites, brood of vipers. He claimed that one of the wonders of the world, the temple in Jerusalem, if it would be torn down, that he would rebuild it in three days. He actually took some rope, wove it together and made a whip, marched into the temple twice at the beginning of his ministry. You can read about it in John chapter 2. And then in the last week of his ministry, you can read that in Matthew, Mark, and Luke. And he walked up into the temple. He drove out the animals and the money changers and the religious elite, whipping them. He also said that he would deliver himself to a cross. How crazy. He also said he would rise from the dead. He must have been out of his mind. In fact, they said, he was demon-possessed. Listen, you don't have to march in Target with a Bible in your hand if God doesn't call you to do that. But people ask me, Carl, wasn't this woman an embarrassment to you? My answer is yes. She did embarrass me. She embarrassed me because when I saw her doing that, the first thing I thought was, man, I should have been with her. I should have thought of that. I also asked, I wonder where her pastor was. How come there weren't 30 or 40 men with her? Yeah, she was an embarrassment. When I consider that Christians all over America, many of them won't even wear a Christian t-shirt during the week. They're afraid they might get a little ridicule. Many Christians will go this entire week and will never utter the name of Jesus or quote a scripture or utter a biblical principle publicly around their peers, many so-called Christians. Yep, that's what embarrasses me. I'm going to tell you what embarrassed me about Target Mama is that she did what millions of Christians should have already been doing and what thousands of pastors should have already grouped themselves together to do. Listen, I'm a pastor. I'm condemning myself. Yes, Target Mama embarrassed me, and she should have embarrassed you too. Once again, we find ourselves among the people of God, and God raises up a Deborah to do what others should have also already done. Listen to these words from the book of Ezekiel. You know, the guy that ate the scroll and laid on his side for 430 days and cooked his food over dung and refused to mourn his wife's death. You know, that crazy guy. Listen to what God spoke to him. Ezekiel chapter 33, beginning with verse 30. 
As for you, son of man, your countrymen are talking together about you. They're by the walls and at the doors of their houses saying to each other, Come, let's go hear the message that has come from the Lord through this prophet. My people come to you, Ezekiel, as they usually do, and they sit before you to listen to your words, but they do not put them into practice. With their mouths they express devotion, but their hearts are greedy for the things of the world. Indeed, to them you are nothing more than someone who sings love songs, who has a beautiful voice and plays an instrument well, for they hear your words, but they do not put them into practice. But when everything I have told you comes true, and it surely will, then they will know that a prophet has been among them.